are you interested in Fedora Linux and KDE Plasma 6? And perhaps also interested in making both projects as good as they can possibly be? Now, I know I am a little bit late to this, but thank you to Neil Gompa for letting me know this is happening. The Fedora KDE Plasma 6 test week. I was not in a position to record a video over the weekend, otherwise this video would have been out a couple of days ago. Now, KDE Plasma 6 right now is currently in release candidate one stage after having an alpha, two betas, and is just about to enter release candidate two, with the actual release being very, very soon at the end of February. This is right around the corner but that doesn't mean that everything is done. Now, you're never going to eliminate all the bugs. Having the alpha, having the beta, these are really important to get most of the major problems, but the second it goes out to the general public, that's when you're going to notice even more problems, but that doesn't mean more testing is a bad thing. Also, Fedora 40 is just around the corner as well in a couple of months from now, so now is as good a time as any to bring people together who are interested in doing this testing and just test it. See what works. See what doesn't work. Preferably trying to break things. Try out things you wouldn't normally do and see if they cause weird results that shouldn't happen. But also making sure your general workflow also functions because that's also important. It's great in order to make sure all of the weird edge cases are dealt with, but if the main road doesn't go where it's supposed to go, that's also a problem. This release cycle is going to be absolutely massive for both KDE Plasma and also Fedora 40. Obviously on the Plasma side, we're moving from Qt5 up to Qt6. This is the first toolkit change in, I don't know, like 10 or so years? It's been a really, really long time. Now it's not like the shift from KDE3 into KDE4. That was a very different situation. That was not ready to happen. Things are a lot more incremental in this case, so it shouldn't be, at least from what I've heard, as much of a nightmare. It should be a fairly easy transition. But on the Fedora side, they're doing something very interesting. Whilst KDE Plasma has been very focused around Wayland development for a very long time now, trying to make it as good as it can possibly be, you've had the option of using X11 or Wayland. It seems like there's a fairly good mix between the two, but most people were using X11. On Fedora 40, that's not going to be an option. You're going to use the Wayland version unless you go out of your way to set up X11. This is happening. Most of the KDE SIG wants nothing to do with maintaining the X11 side. You're only going to have the option to use Wayland. And we've discussed Wayland countless times on this channel. People call me a Wayland shill, but I am by far the biggest critic of the current state of Wayland. And I'm curious to see how this goes. Whilst I do expect Plasma 6 to deal with the general stability or rough edges, whatever term you want to use, and things for Wayland are in a better state than they've ever been before, things still need to be reported, things still need to be tested, and I don't think it's going to be a smooth transition, but it can be as smooth over the very rocky road as it can possibly be. So, if you want to get involved, you're going to need two things. Firstly, a virtual machine or a bare metal machine. Now, keep in mind, testing on bare metal is going to be a better idea. If all we can do is a virtual machine, that's fine. That is better than nothing. But if there is some AMD driver issue, NVIDIA driver issue, and you're testing in a quick and dirty virtual machine in VirtualBox, for example, you haven't done any GPU pass or anything like that, you're not going to be able to properly test that, and a lot of things may not work exactly like you'd expect. You might see performance issues that aren't really there, rendering issues that aren't really there, and virtual machine issues certainly are worth reporting, but they're less of a concern than actual hardware that you're running on your system. Also, this is very important. Note that Fedora development releases are not stable. 
and you should think twice before installing them alongside your production system, or at least make sure to have backups. They're not intended to be unstable. It's not like they're intended to be broken, but there is a good reason why it is not currently the production release. So if you are going to install it on bare metal, there's a couple of configurations that I think make sense. One, have a separate system. Obviously, that is not viable for a lot of people. Most people don't just have a second computer lying around. If you don't have that, my recommendation is take your current system, get another drive, get like a cheap 256 gig drive, something like that, and unplug all your other drives. Don't try to do any fancy dual booting, nothing like that. Install it onto that one drive and only have that one drive plugged in when you want to use it. This will make sure that nothing bad will happen to the rest of your data. Now you can do fancy dual booting stuff to make it appear in whatever bootloader you use, but you're going to get rid of the system in a couple of days anyway. That is a giant waste of time. Just do it quick and dirty. What I'm saying is please, for the love of God, unless it is your absolute last resort or you know exactly what you're doing, don't resize petitions. You're going to lose data unless you have good backups. Don't even try that. It is going to end in disaster. And of course, make sure to have an installation of Fedora 40 KDE RC1. Make sure to fully update your system. If installing a fresh system, it's recommended to use the latest nightly release. So if you scroll down to where it says KDE, there you go. You can grab it right here, stick it in whatever you need to stick it in, and you're good to go. Also very important, Make sure you pay attention to the architecture and you grab what you actually need for your system. Most of you, it is probably going to be this one. But if you happen to have some weird ARM system that you want to test on as well, hey, the option is there. Maybe you want to stick it on like a Pi or something. Also, this is why we do a lot of early testing. I uh, don't believe this was here yesterday. It seems like a build failed. So... Yeah, make sure to grab the build that is known to work as well. With all that set up, there are two main things to be doing. Firstly, how to test. Visit the results page and click on the column title links to see the tests that need to be run. Most column titles are linked to a specific test case. Follow the instructions there, then enter results by clicking the enter result button for the test. Please also try to experiment and explore and perform tasks not mentioned in any of the predefined test cases. So this is the results page, and some people are already doing a bit of testing. Most of it seems to be on actual hardware. There is this guy here on a virtual machine, and this guy here as well. This one, it's not entirely clear. So up here, we have these links. So we click on, say, Window Manager. This will take us to the Window Manager test case and give you a bunch of things that you need to do to just make sure they're working. But obviously, don't just blindly do what it says here. Go and actually do a bit more, mess around with it, try to break it, and see if it breaks. Because if it breaks, that's a good thing it's discovered. Now, it's not a good thing that it's broken, but it's a good thing that it's known to be broken. Once you have your results, come back over here, click on enter results, and then just fill out what needs to be filled out. Now, there is a bug section here, but this is for Fedora's internal tracking, so they know what's currently going on. This is not the only place that bugs should be mentioned. If, or more like when, you come across a bug, also, you should come over to the next section. So firstly, check if it is listed in the Fedora 40 beta blocker bugs and the final blocker bugs. If they are not listed there, then they're probably not known about or they're probably not really important bugs. The second place you should go and the place that bugs actually should be reported is the KDE bug tracker. Now, there is a lot of sections in here and it can be kind of confusing to work out exactly where you need to go. But for issues that are just general desktop issues, they should be reported against the Plasma shell. But each individual application also has its own section as well. Generally, if you report it in the wrong section though, people that are moderating there can move it to the right section. So it's not a big deal, but if you can get it in the right section from the start, that is going to help. 
Also, try not to duplicate existing bug reports. It's all well and good to know that multiple users are suffering from the exact same problem. This gives an indication to the developers that maybe the problem is a lot more widespread than it might initially seem. But having those as separate issues also makes it seem like they're possibly different issues and it splits up the information into two separate locations. So if you can find the original issue or you actually know it exists, make sure you add your results onto that bug report just to give the developers more information in a singular location. Also, there is a second option for bug reports, that being the Red Hat Bugzilla. This will work and it will get the bug reported, but it's a lot less direct of a method. This will go to the Fedora team, which then has to go to the KDE team. And yeah, that'll do it. But if it's a bug specifically in KDE, you're probably a lot better off going directly to those people. Now, I am someone who has read many, 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 many bug reports. And there is a problem that I commonly see with them. Please note, just mentioning your problem in the comment section on the results page is not very helpful. Very often those problems only happen in specific circumstances or with specific steps taken. We need the logs and screenshots and we need to be able to ask you follow-up questions. Please follow bug reports. It's much more useful than a short comment. Thank you. When you are filing that bug report, include the exact steps you performed and whether you can reproduce it again. Now, this I would like to say you can do every time. You can't do this every time. Oftentimes when you run across a bug, it's, oh, I did these various steps and then it happened. You don't have an exact replication condition where if you take these exact steps, it always happens. If you have those though, those are incredibly helpful because even if you don't include the rest of what you have here, if you have a step-for-step -step replication, the devs can do it on their own systems and the devs can replicate all of these. But these are still helpful to include as well. Even if you don't have step-for-step -step replication, just how to get into a general situation where a problem happens is very, very important. Along with that, screenshots or videos if applicable. If you have a video of the crash occurring, if you have a screenshot of some element appearing somewhere that it shouldn't be, very, very important to demonstrate what's actually going on. Oftentimes, if you just say what's going on in text, it's not entirely clear. System journal and log, which you can retrieve by doing this. Better if the application itself that has a problem has its own log. This is also very important. All output in a terminal if started from a terminal. Now, some applications are really bad at outputting things in a terminal. The ones that aren't, though, and actually just jump every possible thing that's happening, very important as well. Oftentimes, it basically functions as a log. And also, your system description. So, are you running on bare bones or a virtual machine? If you're running on bare bones, what hardware are you using? If you're using a virtual machine, how is your virtual machine configured? If it is relevant, what peripherals are you using? Is it related to like a drawing tablet issue, for example? And anything else which may possibly be relevant to the specific problem. And relevant is important. If the speed of your hard drive is not relevant, don't include that. If the time of day is not relevant, don't include that. But if there's a situation where it does matter, that's very important. Now, whilst the test week is a big time to do all of this testing, that doesn't mean that testing just ends at the end of the test week. The nightly images are still being made, KDE is still being updated, the release is still just around the corner. So if you want to get involved and continue testing, you can absolutely go ahead and do so. Just make sure you are running the latest version of the software. It is not useful to report a bug that was dealt with a month ago. Yes, it is happening on your system, but at that point, it's a you problem, not a problem with the project. So, are you going to get involved testing Fedora, testing KDE, or are you just going to wait till the general public release date and then just see what it's like then? I would love to know. So, if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of... These amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, link in the description down below.